Good afternoon, everyone. I hope uh, you all are keeping well and safe. I, Parul Singh, welcome you all for a national online webinar series on mediation hosted by Sayaji Rao Center for Alternative uh, Dispute Resolution, conducted by Faculty of Law, the Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda, in collaboration with Mediators India. Mediation is an age old process of dispute resolution practiced since the Vedic period. It is a low cost keeping the matters, especially family matters, secret among parties and the mediators. Moreover, the solution is not imposed on any party. It is a solution that both the parties agreed to. It gives an effective solution in a peaceful manner. Thus, for aiding the participants in bringing awareness for social transformation, we are conducting this uh, mediation webinar series. Today, we are having third webinar of our mediation series. We are obliged to have with us our distinguished speakers, Mr. A.J. Javid, Senior Mediator, and Ms. Akshata M. Uh, 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 Ashok, Mediator and Co-Founder of SAMA, to enlighten us with their knowledge and experiences. I welcome you all on behalf of Faculty of Law, the Maharaja Shri University of Baroda. Before starting with uh, today's session, I would request all the participants to follow few webinar etiquettes for smooth session. Please uh, keep your mic muted and cameras off during the whole session. Do not use the share screen option. In case of any questions related to the session, kindly mail us on scadr-law at the rate msubaroda.ac.in so that we can put the same before our speaker during our question answer session. Now I request all the attendees uh, to stand up for this university song. Oh, my God. 
Thank you so much, everyone. Now I request uh, Ms. Ashwi Shah, Teaching Assistant, Faculty of Law, the Maharaja Sharjah University of Baroda, to introduce our uh, Professor Uma Ayer, Madam, OSD Faculty of Law, the Maharaja Sharjah University of Baroda. Over to you, Ashwi, Madam. Thank you so much, Baru, ma'am. Good afternoon, our distinguished speakers, participants, and our dear colleagues. I'm grateful for this opportunity to introduce Professor Dr. Uma Ayer, Madam, Professor Uma Ayer Madam has over three decades of academic and administrative experiences. Currently, Madam is an officer on, on special duty of Faculty of Law and Director of Management Development Center, the MSU, Barola. She has served as a former Dean of Faculty of Family and Community Science and has been a member of Senate and Syndicate of the Maharaja Sayajirav University of Baroda. Madam specializes in the area in the field uh, of the in the field of food nutrition and her research is related to dietary management of non communicable diseases like diabetes heart disease as well as adolescent nutrients nutrition with a special focus on midday meal scheme due to her exemplary work madam has been invited to review the midday meal scheme from different states of India by the Minister, Ministry of Human Resource Development. She has also been on the board of eminent bodies of different universities as well as on the committees of Government of India and Government of Gujarat. Madam's contribution in her field is illustrated through her publications. Madam has authored two books and also published over 100 research papers in various national and international journals. Madam has been the principal investigator of various major and minor products funded by the government, NGOs, and industries. She has led projects like Britannia Limited, ICMR JRF, UGC, Kellogg's India Limited, WHO, ICMR, Petronet, LNG Limited, L GACL, GIPCL, GSFC, Jivraj Mehta Smarag, Smarag Health Foundation, Jivraj Mehta Hospital, Ahmedabad. Madam has also contributed to the development of e-content on various topics of EPG Pakshala. Madam's noteworthy contribution to academics has resulted in her bringing a recipient of many national and international awards from eminent institutions and organization like the India Dietetic Association, Shardar Patel University, Home Science Association of India, ICFTHS at Jawaharlal Nehru University, AIMS at New Delhi, Charutar University of Science and Technology, to name the few. Through her guidance and encouragement, the Faculty of Law has been ranked one in the state of Gujarat and third in the top outstanding law schools of excellence by CSR, GHRDC Law School Survey 2021. It's my privilege to invite respected Professor Uma Ayer, Madam, to deliver a welcome address. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Vaishvi, for that elaborate uh, biodata. And uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Respected Honorable Vice Chancellor of the Maharaja Sayajira of University and the patron for today's webinar, Professor Vijay Kumar Srivastava. Uh, our two keynote speakers for today, Mr. A.J. Javed, Senior Mediator, and Ms. Aksheta Ashok, Mediator and Co-Founder Sama. Our webinar conveners, Dr. Namrata Solan uh, Luhar from the Maharaja Sayaji Rao University and Ms. Kavita Balakrishnan from Mediators India. Webinar coordinator, Ms. Kavita Bhatia. All the colleagues of the Faculty of Law, dear students and participants. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all 
to the third day of the national webinar series on mediation which is jointly organized by the sayaji rao center for alternate dispute resolution of the faculty of law and the mediators india today being the third day we have two eminent speakers uh, mr a j javed who is a senior mediator he will be giving us insights on commercial mediation and ms akshita ashok again a senior mediator and co-founder sama who would be deliberating on online mediation both the topics are needed and uh, uh, this topics would help to understand the various dimensions that are related to mediation and uh, uh, today's inputs would be very important because uh, uh, one of the speakers has told us to develop a post graduate diploma on uh, mediation and we are looking forward to inputs from you all so that we come out with a concrete post graduate diploma in uh, on mediation with the help of mediators india and definitely we look forward to your presentation and with this note i welcome you all again today for the interesting session on the two topics thank you thank you so much madam um, now i request ms kavita bhatia assistant professor faculty of law to talk about the webinar series over to you madam thank you parul ma'am very good afternoon and very warm welcome to all respected professor vijay kumar srivastava honorable vice chancellor and the patron of the webinar professor umayyar madam esteemed speaker of the webinar respected senior teachers my dear colleagues and dear participant i am sincerely gratified to the dean ma'am director of the national webinar series on mediation and the conveners of the webinar series dr navita luhar madam and ms kavitha balakrishnan madam for giving me this opportunity to introduce the national webinar series on mediation considering the significant potential of mediation as one of the alternative dispute resolution not merely for reducing the burden of areas but more fundamentally for bringing about a qualitative change in the focus of the legal system for from adjudication to the settlement of disputes this national webinar series on mediation is organized with the vision to educate uh, law students and aspirants of adr about nitty-gritty of mediation process let me tell you about the series the inaugural ceremony was held on 12th february the guest of honor was honorable mr justice r m chaya judge high court of gujarat sir has graced the event with the glorious presence and address the participants on the topic importance of mediation in modern age the other session of the webinar was conducted by eminent speaker ms pooja anand on the topic fundamentals of mediation and understanding conflicting interests madam had delivered sim a stimulative session and encouraged the participants the second webinar on the of this webinar series was held on 19th february wherein ms kavita balakrishnan madam advocate mediator had discussed about civil and family mediation and ma'am had explained the mediation process in very lucid, lucid manner with uh, real life uh, examples and the second session was on implicit biases in mediation that was conducted by uh, ms ekta bahal ma'am and uh, ma'am had explained uh, various kind of biases and the role of mediator in handling biases during mediation process today uh, this is the third webinar of this webinar series wherein uh, uh, mr aj jawad sir would enlighten us about commercial mediation and ms akshita ashok uh, madam would be sharing her expert knowledge on the subject online mediation i trust that the deliberation of uh, proficient speakers would help us in our future endeavors uh, wish, wish you all a very happy learning now i would like to request ms uh, sejal rushi to introduce uh, jawad sir thank you 
Thank you, Kavita, ma'am. me to introduce today's speaker who is going to talk to us about mediation. This is a subject in which we should all be deeply interested. Today we have with us Mr. A.J. Jawad. Sir is an accredited digital dispute resolution specialist with ADR ODR International UK. Sir is partner and head of ADR services in KD Lex Chambers in Delhi. Sir is a mediator and trainer in mediation. Sir is working as a global faculty for ADR ODR International. Sir is senior mediator trainer for the mediation and conciliation project committee that is MCPC of the Supreme Court of India and Tamil Nadu Mediation and Conciliation Center that is TNMCC at High Court of Madras. Sir has an experience which includes conducting basic and advanced training in mediation as well as trainers of uh, training of trainers that is for MCPC and TNMCC, as well as for civil commercial mediation training courses in universities in UK, as well in India as global faculty for ADR. Sir is a co-founder and former trustee of Foundation for Comprehensive Dispute Resolution, FCDR, based in Chennai. Apart from that, Sir has more than 15 years of experience in conducting civil, commercial, and matrimonial mediations. Sir is also ampaneled as India Specialist Mediator with the Singapore International Mediation Center and the Bombay Chamber of Commerce. Also ampaneled as Arbitrator with Madras High Court Arbitration Center and the Indo-German Chamber of Commerce. So everyone present, please join me in welcoming Mr. A.J. Jawad, sir. Do I start? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sejal, for the very sweet introduction. And uh, I'm very grateful to the Dean, Dr. Uma Ayer, and the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Srivastava, for this opportunity to be here. And my colleague, Kavita Balakrishnan, we are all members of Mediators India. And uh, Mediators India has been making quite a good progress under the stewardship of Kavita. So I'm grateful to Kavita for this opportunity. Uh, I think before this, a uh, number of speakers have spoken to you on mediation, uh, various facets of mediation, like uh, what are the fundamentals of mediation, why mediation is important, what are the cognitive uh, biases that one encounters among people. Uh, so now uh, that makes my job considerably easy. So normally I'm, you know, being a lawyer, basically, I love to hear my own voice. And uh, I can go on talking for hours together without stopping. But fortunately, this time, I think uh, Kavita made it very clear. Kavita Bhatia made it very clear because there are two Kavitas. I have to be very specific which Kavita I'm talking about. So Kavita Bhatia made it very clear. She said, sir, you cannot exceed 35 minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Kavita. I mean, she didn't say that actually, but I'm just pulling her leg. So anyway, so 35 minutes, uh, I'll have to talk to you about commercial media. Uh, well, mediation has its applications in all kinds of disputes. Okay, we have seen mediations happening between countries. We have seen mediations happening between communities. We have seen mediations happening at a more micro level within families, uh, in matrimonial matters. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a sort of, a, I wouldn't call it as a panacea for all evil, but for all the illnesses, but perhaps it's one of the more effective mechanisms to resolve a whole lot of disputes. Uh, particularly from the commercial perspective, uh, I think mediation assumes a lot of importance because basically what is the need of a commercial enterprise? Whether it's a company or a startup or an MSME, whichever category it might come under, what it looks for is a quick resolution of the dispute and to go on carrying on with their business rather than be stuck in courts for years together. So mediation can be a very uh, effective 
mechanism for resolving disputes. Now, a very path-breaking development took place in 2015 when the Commercial Courts Act was enacted. Now, what the Commercial Courts Act has done is that it has brought the entire gamut of commercial disputes within the jurisdiction of the commercial divisions of each court, of the different high courts. Uh, so it provides for the constitution of commercial courts to handle disputes of a commercial nature. So if you just look at, I just want to share the screen with you. Uh, I've just extracted the definition of what is a commercial dispute. Uh, can you see my screen? Kavita, can you see yes, my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So what you can see, this is uh, the definition clause of the Commercial Courts Act, and uh, it defines a commercial dispute in subclause C as meaning dispute arising out of ordinary transactions of merchants, bankers, financiers, traders, such as those relating to mercantile documents, including enforce and enforcement and interpretation of such documents, export or import of merchandise or services, issues relating to admiralty and maritime law. Uh, high courts in the original side sometimes used to, I mean, Madras High Court, for instance, which is a, a chartered high court, had this jurisdiction which has now been uh, hived off to the commercial courts. Transactions relating to aircraft, engines, blah, 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 helicopters, leasing, sale, finance, carriage of goods, construction and infrastructure contracts, tenders, agreements relating to immovable property, uh, which is used in trade or commerce, uh, franchising agreements, distribution and licensing agreements, management and consultancy agreements, joint venture agreements, shareholder agreements, uh, subscription and investment agreements pertaining to services industry, mercantile agency, mercantile usage, partnership agreements. So even partnership agreements, as you can see, have come under the gamut of uh, commercial disputes, technology, development agreements, all IP related to registered or unregistered trademarks, copyright, patent, domain names, design, blah, 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 all that has come. Agreement for sale of goods or provision of services, exploitation. I mean, you, if you just see this, it's mind blowing. Okay. I mean, virtually anything that involves money, uh, how I look at it is anything which involves money, exchange of money, uh, I think comes under this, uh, the gamut of, uh, you know, uh, what is the commercial dispute. Now, what is very significant is that this uh, act underwent an amendment. And uh, 12A was added to that. Now, this perhaps would show you how important mediation is and why and how the courts, I mean, the statute, the legislature is mandating uh, mediation before actually instituting a suit. So 12A talks about pre-institution mediation and settlement. It says a suit which does not contemplate any urgent interim relief under the statute. Now, I will come back to this particular uh, sentence, which does not contemplate any urgent interim relief under the fact. I'll come back to that again. But let me just read out this section to you. It shall not be instituted. So a suit which is of a commercial nature cannot be instituted unless the plaintiff exhausts the remedy of pre-institution mediation in accordance with such manner and procedure as may be prescribed by rules made by the central government. Subsection 2 says, uh, if you see subsection 1, it is very clear that in pre-institution mediation, before you actually institute a suit, if you file, before you file a suit, before a commercial court, you have to go through a process of mediation. Uh, then the subsection 2 talks about uh, the central government may, by notification, authorize the authorities constituted under the Legal Services Authorities Act 1987 for the purpose of pre-institution mediation. Uh, this also, I will have to come back to you again on this. Uh, 
because when we are going to be talking about what are the challenges in the implementation of section 12a uh, we will be talking about how these two provisions uh, stand in the way of an effective pre institutional mediation taking place <clears throat> third subsection says not to stand against anything contained in the legal services authorities act 1987 the authority authorized by the central government under subsection 2 so complete the process of mediation within a period of 3 months from the date of application made by the plaintiff so a time limit is prescribed for that and provided that there is also a proviso which says that the mediation may be extended for a further period of 2 months with the consent of the parties a further proviso says that the period during which the parties remain occupied with the pre institution mediation such period shall not be computed for the purpose of limitation under the limitation act i assume that all of you are aware of what the limitation act talks about for example in a regular commercial dispute there is a period i think of 3 years or something that is prescribed for bringing out the suit so since the commercial courts act mandates mediation uh, the period that you spend in pursuing the mediation or taking part in the mediation proceedings is exempted from the applicability of the limitation act now if the parties to the commercial dispute arrive at a settlement the same shall be reduced into writing signed by the parties to the dispute and the mediator so the agreement has to be signed by the parties perhaps if they have lawyers at that stage by the lawyers uh, because this contemplates pre institutional mediation they have not mentioned lawyers specifically but they definitely say that the mediator has to sign normally in court and ex mediation mediators don't sign the settlement agreement uh one contrast that you may find here is between section subsection 4 and subsection 5 it says the settlement arrived at under this section shall have the same status and effect as if it is an arbitral award on agreed terms under subsection 4 of section 30 of the arbitration and conciliation act now where subsection 4 talks about mediator signing the settlement agreement uh, if you look at sub subsection 4 of section 30 it it uh, actually the the conciliation uh, part is in part 3 section 74 talks about a conciliation mediator conciliated agreement now that requires only an authentication by the conciliator so anyway these these are just the technicalities of the thing the fact is that for commercial mediation uh, for commercial uh, disputes mediation is now mandated by the act okay now we have seen uh, what we have seen so far is the uh, what are commercial disputes and the mandatory uh, mediation provision under the commercial courts act which mandates that parties have to go for mediation now unfortunately one of the challenges here in the implementation of this act is that number one uh, where no urgent intermod is required mediation is mandatory if an urgent intermod is required mediation need not be resorted to so invariably what is happening today is wherever parties have got uh, wherever there are commercial courts established and parties have to file that as for the particular form they always say that urgent urgent interim relief is required in this matter therefore we are bypassing mediation so that is one big drawback of uh, this particular act secondly it it invests uh, the entire authority for conducting the mediation under uh, with the legal services authority constituted under the legal services authorities act now we have a uh, whether the legal services authority is really equipped to discharge this function what is the objective and what is the scope of the legal services authority and whether it should really you know uh, poke its nose into uh, commercial disputes that is a larger issue that is to be discussed but the drawback here is that uh, there are institutions in india there are many institutions in india we have camp we have fcdr we have kdlex chambers we have uh, bimac there are different different institutions that have very competent mediators who can uh, perhaps do a great job so we don't know why the legislature has restricted it to only the uh, legal services authority 
so that is one of the challenges that commercial mediation faces in india now the second challenge that comes is in terms of uh, uh, what actually uh, what is the mindset of the people okay i can uh, give you a small example of how uh, see there is a zen saying that says you know that uh, if the only tool that is available with you is a hammer every problem looks like a nail so we have so become so entrenched in uh, litigation in our belief that litigation is the only way courts are the only way of resolving disputes that we are not willing to look at the other me- mechanisms and other methods that are available to us which are much cheaper which are more uh, you know speedy uh, so more time efficient uh, more uh, expeditious whatever you may call it we are losing sight of those methods i, I can give you a small example of that i was uh, referred a mediation uh, by an arbitrator so the arbitrator was seized of the matter so the arbitrator felt that this is the matter that can be mediated so what the arbitrator did was hurt the parties completely and uh, before delivering the award uh, directed the parties to go for mediation and appointed me as the mediator now we had almost 12 to 13 sessions with those parties so essentially the, there was uh, it was with regard to the execution of a contract uh, the claimant had made this claim against the respondent the respondent was the contractor so the, the the contention of the claimant was that there were defaults committed there was a breach of contract committed by the contractor and the contractor's defense was that a uh, situation was created whereby one there were some force major circumstances which there was some change in the law which you know stood in the way of the execution of the contract and also there were a lot of changes made by the claimant which led to a considerable amount of delay being caused in execution of the contract so under the change change circumstances whatever he could do he has done now what happened in the course of the mediation in the course of these 12 or 13 sessions that we held uh, the contractor came up with a proposal and which was in the form of a business offer he said i will provide a business opportunity i have a business opportunity for the claimant that would uh, ensure uh, a profit of 5 crores to the claimant now the total claim of the claimant itself was about 27 to 30 crores or something but uh, what the claimant was saying was that we cannot settle for anything less than 20 crores so if they are keeping 20 crores on the table we are willing to discuss anything for now the counsel for the claimant understood that this was a good offer but you know sometimes counsel uh, feel uh, restrained because they feel that if they tell their clients too much to settle the clients may lose faith in them so he was a little diffident in convincing his client now it so happened that the mediation failed and it went back to the arbitrator and uh, i would love any of you guessing and I, i guess all of you are muted and uh, perhaps if some of you can put your guesses on the chat uh, what was the award amount if you can just put your guesses on the chat then i'll be able to tell you what exactly was the amount, award amount would any of you would like to guess what was the ultimate award passed no guesses well parimal yes you are right around 3 to 5 crores maybe dirga has said then akshay has said 5 crores uh, somebody has said less than 5 crores 2 crores 2 crores okay i think it was 10 crores kohina 2 to 5 crores file pande okay excellent i think all of you will make very good mediator uh the award amount was 4 crores so the counsel for the claimant called me and said sir i think my client should have accepted that offer at least you know the relationship would have been repaired they would have got back into business together and my client could have earned that 5 crores so if not 5 crores at least 4 crores but then the problem today is i i have to now execute this 4 crores award against uh, the other party against the contractor 
and the contractor in all probability is going to challenge the award so if you uh, you know now uh, why i gave you this example okay now there, i'll give you one more example what happened actually but this is still a case which is pending it's not yet disposed of and i don't know how long it is going to get disposed of uh, as we saw you know uh, financing transactions also come under the uh, description of or the under the definition of commercial disputes now in this particular case what happened was uh, there is a lender there is a borrower and there is a dispute with regard to the amount that is to be repaid and the, the accounts uh, of the Uh, lender are being challenged by the borrower so the borrower says that this is not the actual uh, account the reconciliation of the accounts has not been done properly so therefore i am uh, liable to pay a much lesser amount than what is being claimed by the uh, lender now in the course of the mediation one of the options that was discussed was that why don't we refer the accounts to a neutral auditor who will certify as to what exactly is the amount that would be payable by the borrower to the lender uh, it so happened that the lender agreed i mean the borrower agreed to that proposal uh, he said it's a good idea and let's go for that uh, but the lender said that no i'm very angry and very upset with the uh, borrower uh, because he has received the money and now he is denying it and uh, there is no reason why i should settle because i am very hurt and upset because i we helped them in their time of need so you see a lot of emotions were involved over there and my feeling was behind those emotions was the fact that the security for the loan was a very valuable property that the borrowers had offered so the lender was perhaps seeing no reason why he should settle this uh for for an amount which perhaps may be lesser than what he would be recovering through the sale of the property uh the property was mortgaged to the lender so that could be his motivation uh i tried my best with them i i spoke to the lender i said look how many years is it going to take for you to you know pursue this and actually realize the money and how much money are you going to be spending in terms of your litigation costs and all that uh but the lender was adamant and the mediation failed so why i gave you these two examples is to only highlight to you that we need to undergo uh, a change of mind because that is not what is happening today unfortunately uh parties don't seem to realize the advantages of mediation the uh, the value of the saying that a bird in hand is worth two in the bush uh they don't understand that you know sometimes ego plays a very important role uh, sometimes the desire to teach a lesson to the other party plays a very important role because by the time they come to the courts or by the time they choose any of the dispute resolution mechanisms uh, a lot of things have happened between them so even in commercial transactions emotions do play a very important role and that is where i feel that you know sometimes mediation can be a very effective way of addressing those concerns and resolving those disputes uh, i gave you two examples of uh, you know where mediation has failed there are many many examples of where in commercial matters mediation has succeeded so there are there are examples where some very innovative solutions have come up uh, like for instance i was mediating a case where uh, you know a company had uh, a multinational company had supplied some uh, chemicals and tanning materials to a leather tanner a tanning company a leather exporter uh, who was based in chennai and what happened was because of the slump in the market uh, this uh, indian company had lost a lot of money and was unable to pay the supplier company for the goods supply so a summary suit was filed you know i hope you know what a summary suit is when you have all the documents like invoices delivery challenges uh checks which have been dishonored if you have all that stuff you can simply file under order 38 a suit and tell the court that please pass a decree because i have provided the documents and the defendant has to file a leave to defend application and seek the permission of the court to file a written statement so it was at that stage that it was referred to mediation now as we were discussing uh about this the 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 supplier company realized that this company was virtually bankrupt today they had no assets uh, no business nothing 
from which any amount could be recovered because everything was pledged to the banks and they were they were virtually on the roads so once that realization came then we started talking about uh, we were having a casual conversation with the managing director of the indian company and we came to know that uh, you know he had been the president of the uh, uh, leather export council for a very long time and he was on first name basis with almost all the top leather manufacturers in india so the moment this company the supplier company the multinational company came to know about this uh, the representative of the company said that i have a proposal so uh, we said what is the proposal he said we will appoint uh, this company as our distributor so that they can get us business in india because we are trying to get a foothold in india and india is a huge market for us so if he can get us business if he can get us orders then we will pay him a commission and from the commission we will deduct the amount that is payable to us so in this way this matter was set and there have been an umpteen number of matters in a in a partnership dispute where there was a dispute regarding the accounts between the party there again you know what happened was a third party auditor was appointed both parties agreed to be bound by the findings of that auditor so there was a huge dispute about the accounts because each one of them was accusing the other of cheating of manipulating the books of uh, misappropriation of money all kinds of allegations were there and when the mediation started uh, they could not literally sit face to face with each other we had to have uh, private sessions with them and until they calmed down and then we could bring them together and at that point of time when this was uh, discussed uh, this idea of you know having a third party auditor go through the accounts and certify the accounts they agreed to that and the matter was resolved so they agreed to be bound by the findings of the third party auditor so there are different different options by which you can you know you can bring about settlements and commercial mediation and you know what the concept of ease of doing business uh i was i was having a conversation with uh, the ceo of an american company who had come this i'm talking about this was much before the concept of mediation itself uh came into 2002 89 Uh, section 89 was brought into the cpc i am talking about sometime in 1999 when uh, one of my clients i was advising my client on a on an international contract and the ceo of the american company had come down here and we were negotiating and he told us that you know we prefer to deal with china rather than with india and uh, uh, i was a little taken aback by that i said why do you say so he said dispute resolution in china takes hardly 3 months and whereas in india we don't know even if it is uh, you know 30 years we don't know whether we will get a resolution anyway so that is when i realized that you know something was missing and when this concept of mediation came about i thought that you know it was a sort of a, a eureka moment i thought that perhaps this is the answer for what uh, we have been missing in our system so we embraced mediation rather late actually because quite a long time uh much after because uh, if you know the history of uh, how a court annex mediation came into existence mediation was there for a very long time we also claim that we had mediation in our ancient culture uh, i don't know whether we can really uh, equate what we do today as mediation to that yes we had the concept of dialogue we have the concept of dialogue and resolving conflicts through dialogue so if that can be called mediation yes we had mediation much longer than the rest of the world but in in the us if you see in 1976 there was a global pound conference and at that point of time a case in the us courts used to take 11 years for disposal so that and people that was after the great depression and you know people were very disappointed with the way the judicial system was working in the us and there was an overall you know frustration everywhere and that was the time when professor frank sanders introduced the concept of multi uh, multi door courthouse concept and where he said that if a dispute comes to the court it need not go to trial there should be other avenues for resolution of the dispute and one of the you know most crucial avenues that was identified was mediation and thereafter harvard has harvard law school has worked a lot on the concept of mediation now as you all know mediation itself is nothing but facilitated negotiation so basically when part two parties negotiate with each other uh you have already heard about cognitive biases that exist in the minds of the parties 
So as we have seen, even during the mediation, sometimes those cognitive biases are at work. So it requires a, a neutral third party who will, you know, make those parties go beyond those biases, understand what their real interests and needs are, and you know, perhaps guide them towards the resolution. So that is where uh, mediation, as a facilitated negotiation process, can be a very effective tool uh, to resolve commercial disputes. Uh, I'm sure all of you would have heard about the Singapore Convention. Singapore Convention basically applies to cross-border commercial disputes. So if supposing a mediation has taken place uh, between a party based in India and somebody who is uh, in some other country, and the mediation has taken place and there's a mediated settlement agreement, the Singapore Convention provides that the signatory countries will be obliged to execute that agreement, accept that agreement as valid and execute the agreement in the, uh, for example, in India. Now, India was one of the first signatories to that. Uh, and uh, after that, we have not yet ratified the Singapore Convention and we are yet to pass a law on that. Uh, what is uh, the exciting news today is that uh, we are uh, on the verge of getting a legislation to deal with mediation. And that would of course, lead to the amendment of Commercial Courts Act also, because we don't have to rely upon the Arbitration and Conciliation Act anymore for the enforceability of the mediated settlement agreements. The Act makes all mediated settlement agreements enforceable as decrees of the court. So there have been a lot of discussions. Kavita Balakrishnan and I and many others have been involved in these discussions. And uh, we have given our inputs to the government because the draft that came up uh, came out from the government, was lacking in some aspects, so we have given our own inputs, and we hope that those inputs will be considered and, you know, the, the act will be, uh, will be coming into force. Uh, so, what I want to tell you now is that we have been working towards, uh, we have been at it for the past about 15 years now, trying to make main, mediation as a mainstream dispute resolution method. That is, if you have a dispute, you first go for mediation before you take recourse to anything else. So, particularly in the aspect, in, in the in the in the from the perspective of commercial disputes, uh, because businesses get affected, huge losses accumulate because of these problems. Uh, I can I can tell you another case that uh, I was as as a counsel I have been doing, which started way back in 1984. Uh, it was a default in an uh, agreement to sell property. And uh, the the uh, the owner of the property committed a default in uh, selling the property to my client, and uh, there was a suit for specific performance, and it went on and on and on. And finally, in the Supreme Court, uh, during this pandemic last year in 2021 June, uh, after the Supreme Court reopened, we got a final judgment from the Supreme Court uh, deciding in our favor. So I was just thinking that perhaps if these parties, you know, had uh, thought of mediation, in fact. We tried mediation there, but uh, then what happened was the stakes involved were too high and uh, uh, the, the, the parties were you know, not really in the frame of mind to go for mediation and the offer made was too low. So perhaps if, you know, uh, with an open mind, if the parties had approached this and uh, if this could have been resolved through mediation, then uh, we could have cut short that process and not spend the kind of money from, imagine, from 1984 perhaps much before any of you were born. And uh, 2021, the matter gets decided. So just imagine how long it takes in the courts for the disputes to get resolved. So this is what is happening today in India. And this is where mediation in commercial disputes can play a very, very crucial role as a facilitator negotiation process. What is required today is basically a change in the mindset of people. Uh, People have to, you know, understand that it is in their best interest that this, these disputes get resolved. Lawyers should become stakeholders in this. Lawyers should play a very significant role. Uh, and the, the, the field of mediation should expand so as to embrace uh, even non-lawyers as mediators. Uh, maybe whether they are company secretaries, or chartered accountants, or, you know, investment bankers. There's a scope for all of them to be trained as mediators. And somebody asked me one day, you know, when I, when I told one of my friends that I'm conducting, I'm in the midst of a training program, training mediators. He said, 
how many mediators are you going to train so i said uh, approximately about 1.2 billion uh, which is the entire population of india uh, so what what i meant to say was that you know mediation uh, i think everybody should be trained in mediation because training in mediation uh, is basically means acquiring some life skills acquiring good communication skills acquiring a uh, idea of what emotional intelligence is what is uh, the ability to deal with conflict good negotiation skills so all these aspects which i'm sure pooja and others would have covered for you so this is where we stand today this is where uh, and the the path ahead looks very bright and by the time i think you people come out of your university as lawyers uh, uh we hope and we pray that uh, you will have a very uh, a, a well prepared field for you uh, in which you can prosper flourish as mediators as mediation advocates and uh, have a great career in mediation uh, i think i'll stop here i don't know whether i've exceeded my time uh sir uh, yes sir yeah, if you have completed then i think we can uh, we, should we go for the next yeah. speaker na yes yes we can yeah sir what we will do is uh, we will take all the questions yeah. from the participants as of now and then uh, sure, together sure. the questions will be put to the speakers okay okay Rajkumar sir, you are muted. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for enlightening our audience. Now, I request Ms. Renu Rana, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Law, to introduce our second keynote speaker for today's session, Ms. Aksita M. Asok, Mediator and Co-Founder of Sama. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, good afternoon, one and all present here. It is indeed an honor and privilege for me to give the formal introduction of Ms. Akshita Metri Ashok. Thank you, Faculty of Law, for giving me this opportunity. Akshita Metri Ashok, uh, co-founder of Sama, is a lawyer by profession and accredited mediator from ADR ODR London and an alumna of West Bengal National University of Juris Juridical Sciences, Kolkata. Sama is an online dispute resolution platform which is recognized by the Ministry of Law and Justice based in Bangalore that enables for collaborative dispute resolution online. Sama serve as a platform for different government initiatives as well as an institution for enterprises like ICICI, Bank of Baroda, Uran, etc. and the general public. Ms. Akshita is one of the chief coordinators of Indian Med Mediation Week which is one of the largest student enabled access to justice campaigns. Ms. Akshita is also a certified corporate director from Institute of Directors. Recently is emerged as the overall Bangalore winner in the global women's pitch competition conducted by TIE. Uh, apart from her professional life, ma'am is also a music enthusiast, a trained kinetic singer for 12 years and a performing artist. Madam believes in the uh, power of collaboration and kindness. When in doubt, chooses kindness. I welcome you, ma'am, to this online uh, webinar on mediation. Uh, over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was also so lovely to hear Mr. Jawa. I've, I've, I've seen there have been a lot of uh, speakers. There have been a lot of topics covered and about my favorite topic ever, which is mediation. So I, if I'm not wrong, I feel like everyone in the room over the last couple of talks has probably gone over the whole what is mediation, the different types of mediation. Um, I know uh, Mr. Jawad covered commercial mediation, why we should be mediating. All of that, I think we're all on the same page. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of eminent people who will be covering that and talking to you more about that. 
but what i can humbly bring to you today is what it's like to do online mediation um sama as it was said we are an online dispute resolution platform which means we provide online mediation services apart from online conciliation online arbitration we also help with local adalets so a little bit i thought that would be nice um i'll probably walk you through what it's really really like to work with different types of the population and what really is online mediation in the indian context um how are people responding um what are some of the heartwarming stories what are some of the scary stories um why are people adopting it you know and also a big big part of it is law students and the role of law students and the role of mediators who are coming together and pushing access to justice so um i'll share with you a couple of projects tell you a little bit about sama and um, cover largely what it feels like to do online mediation today um i think maybe 3 years down the line 4 years down the line or x number of years down the line there will probably be cooler ways to do it and smarter ways to do it right but as on today with the current circumstances the current adoption rate um and with the current resources this is how we've done it um it's shown a little success in terms of the project and we really hope if anything it just starts some form of a movement for more people to come on board for more usage of maybe even technology in dispute resolution so with that i'm just going to quickly tell you a little bit about um sama and what we do so you get a context of what it's like to be an online dispute resolution service provider okay um i'm just going to share my screen just give me a second also i will probably have 10000 tabs open please please ignore them <laughs> just a second okay um is my screen visible can just someone let me know yes ma'am okay awesome awesome so um the two young boys that you are seeing on screen they are actually two brothers okay um and where they are sitting is their living room at home they received devastating news that their father was lost in a motor vehicle accident right in this very house they received that call saying your father is no more right and these boys have been running pillar to post trying to figure out the insurance claim all they want is that money because now the main person who earns in the house is no more their mother and these two boys are in um have to now take care of themselves right they have been going all over trying to figure this out okay and jan 2018 that's when this devastating thing happened two years is where they've been running around so one of the local adalets that we were assisting in and i'm going to try not divulge too much information but um this case was referred to that online local adalet it took one hour to solve this matter because you have a collaborative dispute resolution process people are trying to find out why what happened how do we fix this right and the correct stakeholders are in the room these boys in that very same living room where they got that news got this case solved okay and what you are actually seeing is not them showing the victory sign which i mean it should it could even be that right but it's actually the boys saying that they understand that 2 lakhs is how much they are receiving and all of this took 1 hour and one of the crucial people who were in, who, who made this happen apart from the judicial officer that was facilitating it sama helping out with the technology was a law student who was the case manager making sure that this case went from the start to the finish completely online right and this is the power of being able to help being able to push access to justice because let's say in a normal mediation also right the process in itself is so beautiful 
mediation is such a beautiful process and the approach to dispute resolution is so stunning because you're asking why you're asking questions you're trying to find a holistic answer to the problem you are trying to find for the two parties sitting here what works for both of you it does not matter what works for the rest of the world what works for you and you have a mediator who's not there to say you are right you are wrong this is how it should be done nothing facilitate and help those two people come to a solution that works for them right that's why you see settlement settlement agreements they all have a higher rate of being complied with a good mediation is it's a holistic dispute resolution process so when you come to online mediation what changes is two things right one the medium so for all if there are lawyers in the room if there are law students in the room there is a lot that we already know about how the offline space works whether it's courts and and litigation etc one thing that i would request you while we're just going through this hour together right the internet is a new medium which means there are new opportunities okay so maybe what's working offline can be brought online maybe there are some things that work offline you can also do that really well online maybe there are some things we can learn and unlearn when we're doing an offline mediation we do it a certain way when we're doing online mediation maybe we adapt a little differently but the essence remains the same okay so just keep in mind new medium new opportunities okay and um, the second thing is you have a fourth player so instead of just the parties and the mediator you also now have technology that acts as a fourth player in these mediations okay so um this is one of our favorite photos at sama like i can't tell you so many people were in tears the case manager was in tears we were in tears when we like this especially this particular case because we've been talking to them and we know how hard it's been you've lost a person right no one should have to take this long especially when they're going through something access to justice is important every single person everywhere needs to have access to it so we need to find different ways of doing it maybe there are five ways right now six ways right now there's no harm in finding more ways there's no harm in redistributing how these disputes are in all these existing ways okay so i hope that story was um, i hope you enjoyed it So I am one of the co-founders at Sama. Maybe some of you know my co-founders. They are Pranjal Sinha and Vikram Kumar, and um, we run an online dispute resolution platform. This is basically where we provide online mediation, online conciliation, and online arbitration services. I will be focusing more on the online mediation bit of it today. So I hope that is something you're excited to learn about. so every time we've met people we've met some really really cool lawyers and mediators and law students who are very pro seeing hey what's next let us have some um you know let's have some innovation in this space we've seen quite a few of them okay but we've also met a lot of people who are super scared super scared as in oh my god i have a case i'll go to court that's the mindset i have a case i'll see you in court i have a case let's go to court we need to change that we need to change that a little bit okay because mediation is so so helpful and you know your dispute the best right you can always ancillary like have people help you out but you know your case the best okay and in a world where everything is online now okay a lot of people are like oh is the online space safe can you know is it is it worth it is it going to be easy will i know how to do it a lot of people are afraid because they're nervous a lot of people are afraid because they just don't believe the online space is going to be helpful some people are just a little scared they may not do as well in the online space is the offline space but think about it so much of your life is already online if we're traveling we want to we want to go somewhere we're going to make my trip go ibibo we're, we're booking our tickets we're going to an airbnb if we want to find a place to stay we want to go somewhere we need a cab most of us most of us are using ola and uber here right um and that's how you're booking your cab and let's say you want to eat swiggy swiggy our savior that's online everyone wants efficient everyone wants faster what is the one common thing with all of this right you want a loan from a bank now they have things like three click loans you know so everyone wants efficient fast processes going forward but if you can do so much online why are you not solving your cases online what is the problem what is what is holding you back sometimes people are typing on whatsapp and telling me how the online space is not somewhere where you can communicate 
but it's on WhatsApp. Like you're talking to me about it on WhatsApp, you know? So maybe a little bit, we can just think about it from that angle that so much of our life is already online. Why not resolve your cases online as well? Now we'll make sure that what cases are coming, what types of cases are coming, are they allowed to come online? All of that is a different story, of course. But the mindset itself, just think about it. How much of what you do on a daily basis is already online, right? And if you're having food delivered faster, cabs coming quicker, you have your loans getting dispersed faster, don't you think dispute resolution also needs to start matching that pace? Otherwise, you're going to start having super efficient services and your dispute resolution is still going to stay here and that's just going to keep, keep creating a huge gap. So wherever possible, if technology is that magic that's sort of making things efficient, smoother, faster, finding different ways to do it, why aren't we like sort of looking at technology to help the legal space out a little bit as well? Yeah. So um, Sama is, so when you actually look at it, because we also only, only use collaborative dispute resolution processes, it is cheaper than a litigation. And I'm also talking to you about small claim matters. Let's say that you're not able to pay your EMIs on time. You've taken a loan. When you took that loan, your circumstance was different. Two years down the line, you're not able to pay it. You're a human. Things happen. Someone has fallen sick. The pandemic has hit. You've uh, lost someone. You've lost your job. These things are very, very real problems, right? How long is that going to take if that were to go to court? And honestly, is that something that should be clogging the courts? We don't think so. So it is faster when you are trying to make sure the right people are in the room, just working online, staying where you are. It also helps retain your relationships. So when I say customer relationships, let's assume that it's a bank on one side, right? Providing a collaborative dispute resolution and saying, hey, tell me why, what happened? Why aren't you able to pay? Is a game changer. It is a game changer because suddenly there's a lot of trust that's being built, which is the foundation of your mediation, right? And cases get solved within an average of three hours, 15 minutes. So when I say that, I'm saying you're probably spending a couple of minutes on the platform on a daily basis, you know? So over 21 days together, the amount of time you would have spent is three hours, 15 minutes on one case. Now, again, this will be depending on what type of case. So I'm not talking in this particular instance of three or 15 minutes. Think of a low complexity, straightforward case, a payment dispute um, and a loan, uh, a loan dispute, you know, stuff like that. But the same dispute takes a very, very, very long time when you have to use an adversarial um, platform. So the idea is that people can resolve their legal disputes completely online from the comforts of their home. And a lot of times when we're seeing this, we realized over time, as we were doing this, we were working with local dollars, we were working with different states, we were working with different enterprises. We were like, wow, it's not just the people who have a dispute that this is helping, but even our mediators, our amazing mediators who initially, if you needed access to, let's say, um, a particular mediator who is in Chennai, everyone in Chennai benefits from that. But now imagine, if that mediator is an amazing, amazing, let's say, a, a banking mediator right, or a family mediator, what is stopping from that person to be able to give his or her services to people from all over, right? Because the beauty of the online space is that it immediately drops down the geographical logistic issue, right? You, I'm sitting in Bangalore. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think all of you are sitting in Bangalore as well, but it's OK. And that's the beauty of the online space because it drops that. And it not only helps your parties, but it also helps whether you're a law student as a case manager, whether you're a mediator, just having access to so many more types of cases, so many more different types of people to interact with. Imagine having a flourishing mediation sort of career of being able to have been having access to so many types of cases from so many different types of people. Because ultimately, that's what also helps you develop your style, right? And you would be shocked to see how just the thought process of how people resolve disputes literally changes between states, right? What is OK in, let's say, a Tamil Nadu is so different from what might be OK in a Gujarat or what might be OK in a New Delhi. The people are different. The way that the communities operate are different. So it's actually a great, great space for everyone. Um, let me just, I've already walked you through this. We can skip it. So if you have not understood anything I've said so far, if you fell asleep, you took a quick bathroom break, you came back and you're like, whoa, what is Akshita saying? Just remember this. It helps you save money. 
it helps you save time and it helps you save relationships disputes are inevitable and disputes is not something to be scared of you know it is because someone has questioned or has an opposite view that some of the coolest inventions have happened offices thrive when you have different types of perspectives coming in that's when you have a wholesome approach to a situation so disputes are inevitable but how you choose to resolve the dispute it's completely in your hands and it's high time it is high time we all start looking at mediation you know and once you get into it once you start solving your cases through mediation i think it would be very difficult to go back um and and reach a court if it's something that you can mediate so um this is our commitment we want to be able to also provide it at scale we want every person every type of person from all over having access to justice and of course as i'm going to talk to you i'm going to tell you do we all have equal internet no not at all can we all speak english no not at all you know are there like very big cultural differences of course and that's why when i walk you through some of our projects i'll let you know how we tackled it there are some questions that we we still don't have the answers to and maybe one of you have the answers but um, this is one way though using technology does allow you to have a little more cases with a little more people having access to it so quickly efficiently and cost effectively that those are the pain points that are currently existing in the in, in the indian judiciary system and that's where we're trying to sort of ease that for people um in terms of statistics so there are over 19 lakh cases that have hit the sama platform and uh, these are the number of cases that have been resolved over to cases are being resolved as we speak of course being in the online space has its limitations if you don't if you're if you're not able to give us a mobile number or an email id it becomes very difficult for us to be able to reach out right so some of the cases do become non starters and we were very very aware that the, there are some very big issues that can come with moving to the online space um but yeah it does not mean that it doesn't work right and uh, this is actually the total settlement amount from the cases that we've solved um and that's quite big and these are the cases that didn't get stuck and clog the court system and actually allow for cases that need to be there uh to get solved there so we hope this number keeps going up um you we will keep everyone uh in the loop um this is just if anyone is curious of how this happened um if there are a lot of law students in the room guys we started this when we were in law school uh pranjal in fact my uh, co-founder i think this is all he thought about in his law school and um, this is basically it like we 2015 there was a google startup weekend and i know pranjal went there vikram that's where vikram and pranjal also met and um, 2017 is when we were officially recognized by the ministry of law and justice and that was such a big push right and it was a push for odr in itself um 2017 indian mediation week i don't know if you're familiar with this but indian mediation week is an access to justice campaign that we started when we were in college so quickly rolling back um the minute i was when i was in law school to be very honest to everyone and i don't know if i'm going to upset any of the professors here by my second year i was like i don't think law is for me i was so i came into law school thinking I'm going to change the world. I'm going to save. I'm going to do this. And then when I came in, I think I set wrong expectations for myself. So I was a little underwhelmed. I was like, okay, I'm not feeling like my value system is matching with the profession that I'm entering, and I'm a little scared. And I wasn't feeling that josh that I entered law school with. And then I stumbled upon the Idea Idea London um, mediation accreditation program. I cannot I still remember the day where the first the first session started and I was like this is it this is me and this is all I'm going to do if I'm going to be a lawyer it is going to be mediation and nothing else because suddenly all the words that were being used emotional quotient speak to the people these are real human beings who have issues ask questions the why the how that is how I operate as a human also you know so that was the day in my law school I was like I don't think I'm going to do any other sort of internship that was a little extreme i wouldn't advise that but i didn't do any corporate internship after that i didn't do any litigation internship after that i directly started interning at mediation centers one summer i spent with leela olapalli in camp uh, in bangalore one summer i went all the way to delhi i went to the delhi dispute resolution society the parliament branch um spent my time there and 
the inception of Indian Mediation Week happened when we were in college. By our third year, Pranjal and I realized our love is mediation and we're going to do something about it. Did we have money? No. We were pretty content on eating free hostel meals. And um, do we have a lot of resources? Not really. The only thing we had was we know that there is a collective group of people that are looking forward to pushing for access to justice who think mediation is the way to go. And that's how we started interacting with different mediators, speaking to different mediators. That led to, at that time, this platform also existed. No one used it, guys. Nobody used the platform. Okay. And so what we would do is we started going out on the streets. We would go to, we would pick an area and then we would say, okay, 20 of us would go, 20 of us would have pamphlets and we would tell every shopkeeper, every security guard, every like manager, whoever, stalls, chartwalas, everyone, we would tell them about mediation. Because at that point, that is all we could do. We had our voices and we were like, we're going to use it. I remember Pranjal and a group of friends, uh, of our friends did a Nukkad Natak. They did a play inside the court premises. I remember I sang in the middle of a T junction in one of these places called Sector 5. It's four roads coming together. And I stood in the middle and I put on a show. A lot of people came and then I ended it by telling them about mediation. We did all sorts of stuff. And that's what I want to tell you. Right now, wherever you are, you can start your mediation journey. Okay, and there are a lot of us, especially like Mr. Jawad and everyone else in the mediation fraternity. I know that Kavita Ma'am is doing a lot as well. Everyone is readying a more easily accessible mediation ecosystem for you. We're all trying to do it. But that being said, you don't have to wait. Join in. Join everyone right now because there's so much space for all of us to be pushing this forward. 2018, we received our first case. Super excited about it. So in 2019, there is an organization called Agami, right? And they held an open global EADR challenge, which was basically around, I think, 82 or a, I'm not sure about the exact number, but teams from all over the world came to see who could build an um, EADR platform for India. And I don't know what, I think stars aligned. We've been working on it for so long. Indian Mediation Week had been rolling by then. That was something we won. And that is also how we met Mr. Pramod Rao from ICICI Bank, and they became our first large enterprise client as well. All of this, we were in our fifth year. Um, so 2020, the pandemic hit. Everyone was super upset. Lawyers were stuck at home. Mediators were stuck at home. Litigants were stuck at home. Courts were shut. And we were like, if we do not help now, I don't think Pranjal Vikram, I, or the team would have been able to sleep. We have been working on using the online space. And when this happened, so we moved in, spoke to a few state governments, the Loka Dalats, which is such a predominant part of people's dispute resolution, um, especially in the smaller districts of different states. We said we'll do it pro bono. We will just help. We cannot, when you have some sort of a solution, some resemblance of a solution, push through. That has been one of the coolest projects we've worked on. As we speak right now, Sama is actually um, doing the Maharashtra Lokadalat as we speak right now. The Maharashtra Lokadalat, all, all the districts and the traffic chalan cases, Sama is a technical partner for that. And there are so many, I think there are over 200 law students who are currently helping us with it right now. And it's amazing to see how the district, I mean, state service authorities are working, to see how the district officers are working, to see how everyone's adopting online, the questions that are coming. The general public is so curious. Some are so angry. Some are super relieved. Some are so grateful that there is an option like this, you know. So just, you know, just a quick sort of wanted you to see where it came from. If you were like a little confused, like how do you get here? What do you do? So we know that just as at Sama, we're not going to be able to solve such a large problem, right? A large community problem requires a large community solution. And that is why we have over 3,000 plus neutrals. When I say neutrals, I mean mediators, conciliators, and case managers, right? So we have over 3,000 plus neutrals who are empaneled with us. They can speak over 31 languages, and they are from 443 cities. I would be a fool to think Akshita Ashok, who lives in, who's lived her whole life in Bangalore, is from Kerala, can speak Malayalam, right? Will then go to Gujarat and try and understand and mediate a dispute in what, English or Malayalam? Not happening. Instead, 
having someone from there who can speak the language solving for that case makes a huge difference and this is the only way it is not going to be possible for just the sama team to be like yes we are going to change it is a collective effort of all of us every mediator who solved even one case is adding to the collective movement of moving forward whether it's offline whether it's online right so we are so grateful for this gang of people um just these are mediators who are either district judges from retired judges to supreme court lawyers to practicing full time mediators young lawyers who are looking to enter into the mediation space and law students you know so law students as a case manager you're assisting you're shadowing your mediators conciliators and arbitrators and um, it's amazing i cannot tell you i think we've learned at least 20 new things from each of these people as they are solving cases so that's basically how it works um another thing that sama does right we are a private organization but we've been very very mindful of also making sure as much impact as possible help as many people as possible with online mediation so you have um gujarat rajasthan delhi maharashtra bihar and madhya pradesh these are the places that sama has held projects and worked on it now every time we hold a project it's the learnings you know you would have heard the word we keep saying there is a lack of awareness people don't know that they have this option people are not aware of collaborative dispute resolution or maybe they're aware theoretically but when push comes to shove and you have a dispute why is that not the first thing coming to your mind right exactly like what mr jawad just said that should be the first sort of first um thing that you move to when you want to resolve your dispute So these were six states which had a cumulative population of 400 million people right and um, every state we made sure that we were operating in their particular language and yeah these are some of the the pitfalls of having i think it's not really a pitfall but such a diverse nation right something that works here is it going to work in another state we will only know after we see it So the first story that I want to tell you about the first project that we worked on we also have a full report so if any of you are like super interested to know more I'll drop that link on the chat but the Madhya Pradesh State Legal Service Authority I cannot tell you what a beautiful project it was okay it is the first time this has happened but basically there is um, a urja mahila help desk like a women's help desk in police stations which is required under under the nirbhaya fund right so all these help desks in police stations madhya pradesh decided let's see how odr works when we're handling matters of the urja mahila help desk in police stations so three districts jabalpur gwalior and bhopal right there was a pilot project to see how will online mediation work for people who have complaints and come to the police station to the urja mahila help desk this has never happened before that honestly excites everyone at sama a lot to be able to figure out something that hasn't been done and like sort of see how to bring people on board the mediators were from madhya pradesh absolutely amazing so how it worked was people will come obviously to the help desk and they will file a case the police will decide whether it is something that can be mediated if it was very grave it was something super serious it would still go according to their process and move forward but if they felt there was a scope for settlement it would come to sama so we would get different police stations pushing their disputes onto the sama platform we had mediators from madhya pradesh already in panel on the platform all their dashboards ready waiting to solve these cases and we had law students who were there to act as the main point of contact between the mediator between the uh, state legal service authority and the urja help desk and between the parties right and it was immensely immensely successful 63% um of the matters that came to us we got consent it they were settled and we were we were being we were not being super ambitious we were like let's see how this works and then the number of learnings that come out from it right like how many of the police departments had the infrastructure to hold a project like it so that was solving from that level itself how do we try and make how do we try and make people understand what online mediation is in just two words how do we make people understand what a mediator does just in three sentences 
right? And we would take surveys and we've like worked and reworked our notices, our language, every word that goes out is checked and double checked and worked with. And it's insane. There was one case where, um, again, and I think just like the josh of the law students really come in, right? So there was one party that had a big problem with the neighbor. It came here, it came to us. So upsetting. While the case manager was talking to us saying, you know, tell me what happened. I will connect you to the right uh, mediator to help you. All she said was, I know I've come and complained about this, but my biggest issue is just how I've been treated in the past. Okay. And you know, they have this vent and all that vent cast smoke comes directly into my house. And I think that is the most disrespectful thing that they can do. So I know they are that kind of people. And therefore I'm now upset about these things. And that's why I've come here to file a neighborhood dispute. All the case manager did was tell the mediator, hi, when you're speaking to the other party, I just wanted to let you know that as I was speaking to this party, they did mention about this vent, which is nothing to do with the case. But um, I did ask her further questions because she was upset about it. When the mediator spoke to the other party, all the mediator said was, you know, let us know, tell me what to do. I said, do you know that there is a vent that leads from your house that directly goes into theirs? And they were like, no, we had no idea. They cleaned and changed and removed that vent the very same evening. They just didn't know. They didn't know that that minute thing in the corner where people thought was just not even something they need to talk about, but which festered so many bad, like bad thoughts and bad emotions. They were completely fine. Then they came back on a group call. They were talking, they were chatting, they were laughing. Everyone was super helpful because that case manager took that little effort to find out a little more from the party, making sure they were comfortable, understanding what a mediation is. And I know as I'm saying this, it feels like, oh, that is such a niche possibility of a case manager speaking an event. But no, these are the possibilities that exist when it's mediation. These are the things you can get into when it's mediation. And would you have ever thought that event would have solved this entire problem? Never, never in a million years, because you just don't know. We're all humans. We all feel a certain thing. We all feel certain things. We get upset. We get happy. But it is just truly the beauty of mediation. And the more invested you are in the process, the more possibilities just open out in terms of creative solutions, in terms of having someone you can trust and talk to. You can move into a private session with your mediator and really tell them to your heart's content what you are and not OK with. You know, so there is a report for this um, Madhya Pradesh uh, report. I will send that to you. I will put it on the links. I mean, I'll put the link on the chat so you have access to it. It is definitely something worth looking at because this has never, ever happened before. The police, you know, when we were training them, the first, I think one of the first reactions were, do we need to do this? You know, we've been doing it a certain way for so long. But there were one set of people who are like, wow, we are so excited to try something new. Hey, these are the problems that we've been facing in the offline space. Do you think we can solve it in the online space? Now tell me, guys, which textbook or which like notebook will be able to provide you with these minute sort of changes that just act as a game changer. You know, it is just from these experience of interacting with them. And that's another thing. We will never, ever know what it is like to be in those police stations handling these disputes day in and day out. They have been doing it for so many years. We would be fools not to be interacting with them and finding out from them, hey, what's not been working for so long? Where do you think we can come in and help you? Let's create a workflow that also includes things that you already know how to use. And then we'll move forward. Small steps, baby steps, but so worth it. Um, and you know, I'm so happy to let you know that everyone is still so pro the project moving on and, and staying on that we're planning to bring it back. So um, that was such an exciting and that was just the power of, you know, mediation. And this is another type of uh, stuff that happens. So large enterprise customers, you're talking about large, large, large banks. You know, have you ever had an issue where you're so upset with the flip cart or you're so upset with any large enterprise? I'm just taking names, right? Um, but you just don't know who is that one person who can take that decision and just solve it. Right. And it's large scale. Look at the number of people that are working with enterprises. So for a large bank like ICICI to come forward and say, hey, for my customers, I'm going to make sure that I try something that is collaborative was a big step. It was a big they are, in fact, pioneers in terms of enterprises that are coming forward and taking a large public stance saying this is something online mediation, online conciliation, online arbitration are things that I want to try doing for my customers.
you know and they were actually able to resolve over 8000 plus disputes and think about it they have disputes from all over india and they all just have one centralized system so you can be sitting in the headquarters in bombay and know exactly where what case is happening across the nation so that, that was super helpful for them all the ones that were settled didn't even have to move forward they were just settled the customer is happy the customer is grateful and they're going to stay on as a customer and this is a small very very these are like simple disputes right it's just payment disputes now if one of you were to ask me how would like divorce or like large property matters or family matters i would say we are primarily doing small claims right now we have moved to larger let's say like home loans we are moving to larger disputes but it's not impossible if you have a great mediator who knows exactly what the subject matter is and has the skills the good skills of a mediator and can conduct a good mediation that's that's it making sure the right parties are in the room you have an online medium you don't even need to wait for everyone to get into the same room you can go ahead and speak so i think it's been very helpful it's been incredibly it's it's a completely different experience from seeing how like a state project would work right the different obstacles are so so not what would happen in a bank so let's say in a bank your entire bank one side of the parties all can speak english and the other side everyone speaks every possible language you know but let's say in a government project almost everyone is only comfortable with their local dialect so these are things that you solve for as you go but just if you can just remember that everyone is ultimately humans everyone just wants their dispute to be resolved with respect and with kindness then it's limitless what you can do so um this is actually the group general counsel mr pramodra who like gave us a quote um and this was taken from the niti ayog and agami odr um handbook which i'll also share to you so if you are curious to know that hey how does a large company make that shift and adopt to um adr right or adopt to using online mediation online conciliation online arbitration this handbook is beautiful it gives you like a start to finish about what india's landscape is on online mediation online conciliation online arbitration and how different people can now start adopting it and these these things like this play such a big role even in the awareness angle now an icici bank coming forth and saying they're going to start using collaborative dispute resolution is a big win for the entire adr community the entire adr odr community right and now you have niti ayog also coming and pushing forward saying hey this is something that we think is of interest for india and for the access to justice to move forward great so now you have enterprises you have state governments you already we already have mediation centers we already have mediators doing a stellar job offline as well you now have an odr handbook that exists the time is now like get on board like you know things are moving fast people are waking up and mediation is so very much here it's been here for a while but so very much now trying to be the first thing you think about so um these are just a few people that we help out and the reason i put this slide in is just to show you that it doesn't it look like a ripple effect like a lot of these are names that are pretty known in every household and if all of them are now deciding that hey this is something that we want to adopt i think it's high time we all start thinking about it i think it's high time we think of collaborative dispute resolution is my first way to go and um, even as lawyers probably that's something that we want to make sure that toolkit and that skill set is something that we have because everyone seems to be moving there right and as i was telling you with every other industry sort of trying to become more efficient faster smoother with the use of technology we do need innovation we do need different ways of now trying to resolve disputes we cannot overburden the court look at our pendency it's crazy right it's insane and that's those many people who are not getting justice so maybe we need to sit down and sit back and be like i think i need to reimagine what dispute resolution is like and as a law student who is now going to be a lawyer moving forward how do i effectively want to give my time and help people solve their disputes and people saying mediation is only a part time thing it's like a hobby it's not at all there are amazing full time mediators whose entire career is mediation we know mediators whose entire career is online mediation so that is you you just need to look around people are like really were there 
So this is a really, really good toolkit and skill set to have. Personally, for me, just going through my mediation training has helped me in every sort of conversation that I speak to people about. Like whether it's with my parents, whether it's with my siblings, whether it's me speaking to general public who's very upset and can't understand what mediation is, or I'm speaking to large enterprises, the skills of being able to use your words correctly, destabilizing, making sure that you're you're someone who knows how to keep confidential information where it needs to be kept. All of that is just such. It's so helpful in life. So I have convinced every family member of mine, anyone who's from any field who has a lot of experience, I'm like, hey, your next step should be to get trained as a mediator because it is so worth it, right? And um, yeah, I think another fun thing to let you guys know is recently um, the World Bank has actually partnered to see how online mediation is helpful in India, right? So in Madhya Pradesh also, and one thing that they were trying to track, apart from seeing how efficient it is. is also the mental health of the people who are coming uh, to solve their disputes and i don't know if that's something that is exciting everyone in the room right now but personally for me i was so so thrilled that there is also an element of mental health that's being looked at now right with it being almost a buzzword but so important um being able to track what it's like do you feel more comfortable sitting at home and solving this dispute what is stopping you from getting this dispute solved is it because courts are too far away from you how did it feel to have a mediator speak to you how did it feel to have a case manager by your side throughout the case you know and just being able to do all those things there's just so many learnings that's coming out there are so many beautiful things and when we were going to do no offense to anyone but this is just what was told to us right when we said we're going to be doing a lok adalat in a particular state people were like no nobody in that state will be able to do it nobody in that state guys entire rajasthan entire every district in bihar every district was able to solve some disputes online right and i'm taking these two because delhi rajasthan and bihar were our first three that we had done consecutively and people were like you know is it going to be possible maybe you know we should be focusing only on the metropolitan areas that's not true at all all of us should have access to this and i'm so happy to tell you statistically every single district was able to do it did we have to go that extra mile and sort of explain some stuff twice the rise to people yeah but i can guarantee you now all those people know exactly how it is to use mediation and use mediation in the online space to solve their disputes we've had some people call us back and say hey you know like that time you had helped us in this and now i have another dispute that my sister is going through do you think i can just connect her i don't want her to go to court it was such a big moment for us because i think right from law school we've been hearing no one talk about mediation enough or loudly and there were just such few people that we were looking up to and now to have someone from the general public come back and say i don't want my sister to go through court i think this is a better option for her was it was like a win my mind was blown you know i was like okay i feel like all these years these small seeds are now sprouting into something so just i mean i hope this was a little helpful for you the one thing that we say at sama is suljhao magar pyar se um that means resolve but with compassion and it's if you think about it it's just the essence of mediation right it's the essence of collaborative dispute resolution even in the lok adalat like you have your traffic chalan cases and just using mediation right now the cool thing is in the maharashtra lok adalat right now they are using our mediators for pre counseling sessions guys that's not something that happens usually right usually you just have your judicial officers but they're actually using our mediators because they prove themselves to be absolutely amazing at providing these services and that is open to all of us all of us who are just driven to provide access to justice driven towards collaborative dispute resolution here it is i think this is the time the time is now and if there's one thing that i would say is please don't wait right like with whatever you have right now there are always small pockets where you can create impact um there are always small pockets and opportunities that allow you to learn more and i think all our um, law students who have worked with us i don't know if any of you follow us at sama um we have ajitesh who started through indian mediation week he distributed pamphlets everything in his area he um then went on to start case managing he case managed over a thousand cases way more than a thousand cases 
and uh, he finished his accreditation and he started co-mediating. Mediators, Supreme Court level mediators would say, I want Ajitesh to co-mediate with me, right? Only because he has so much experience of actually speaking to people and helping them resolve their disputes. And um, it just gives me so much joy and pride to say that Ajitesh, who is still in college, right? He's still a law student, is actually leading the Maharashtra Lok Adalat right now. He has so much experience. He is still in law school, guys. And it's like, even when I'm talking about it, I just feel so overwhelmed sometimes because it's just the amount of passion that he has towards the concept of mediation, towards the concept of collaborative dispute resolution. He's been doing it for more than four years now. Of course, he's co-mediating. He has a mediator with him who is um, helping out that in, in the cases. But to be able to say that in my college, I led an entire nation's, like I mean, an entire state's um, Lokadala like helped out in reading that amazing like you know so there are a lot of opportunities no matter where you are in life are you ready to retire have you just joined law school there is a space there is a space for you so it's up to you whether you want to grab it take it uh, but yeah just wanted to let you know that there are a lot of incredibly cool things happening and um, next time there is a dispute i think if you're you should be able to say hey let's let's see if we can mediate it now let's see if we can just mediate this and then maybe, you know. So, yeah, I feel like I've spoken a lot. Even when I saw the schedule, I was like, wow, there's a lot of time to speak. So I'm sorry if I bored you guys a little bit in between. I will drop the links that I spoke about as promised. I also do have one fun video that I'll drop in, which is after the first Loka Dalit, right? But we were also new trying to figure out. We did a small video of the case managers and what their emotions were like throughout. So when the days got really tough, when they were very confused, when we had to change a workflow, etc. So we have like we've captured law students from all over um, the country and how they felt working on the Loka Dalit. So I think it's one of, it's such a special video. Like I just love it. It's my most watched video on YouTube as well. So I will uh, link that to you. If that's something you want to see, you just want to see what it's like for a fellow law student and what they've been doing. That's possible as well. And yeah, Sama's doors are always open. If access to justice is something you like, if online mediation is something you want to explore, um, no matter where, you just want to explore to see, hey, what is my opinion on mediation or online mediation? Come, we'll create a space for you to make it. And not just us, there are so many people in this space. Resolve 360 is working on this. Cord is working on this. I know so many of the mediation centers now have their online centers as well. So you have multiple opportunities. Um, I would suggest just take that step and see what it is for yourself. Speak to people and help them solve their dispute and then decide what's right and what's wrong. Or then decide what you feel you want to do about it, right? Theory is one side and that's amazing, but experience is something totally different. So that's it from my side. Thank you so much for listening to me for a very long time. And I will stop sharing and I will hand it back. Thank you so much, madam, for enlightening our audience with your knowledge and experiences. Uh, now, I would like to uh, I would like to call Kavita Goel, ma'am, for a question and answer round. So, uh, she is assistant professor in our faculty. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Rajkumar sir. Uh, Pam, it was a great session and motivating and uh, stimulating session also and it's yes it's true that it's high time to turn towards mediation which can save money time and relationship and i think now you are living your dream uh, by contributing in changing the world of resolution by prc <laughs> okay now uh, our students have sent uh, some questions uh, if you permit then may i ask question to the speakers thank you now, first question to Jawad, sir. Sir, a uh, student is asking that are there counselors uh, can help uh, mediators in resolving dispute with the emotional aspects for the better resolution? Well, actually, it happens sometimes because uh, when particularly when we are doing uh, family mediations, you know, where a lot of emotions are involved, and sometimes parties uh, perhaps may have undergone some 
abuse or something like that so in those circumstances what happens is uh, uh, in the family court for example we have uh, uh, counselors who are provided by the court in the family courts so those counselors play a significant role and there are also psychiatrists attached to the court so even in private mediation we can take the help of counselors if the parties are willing to so it all depends on the consent of the parties are to okay thank you sir next question to you only sir after settlement award in commercial mediation if parties do not comply with then what would be the next course of action okay now if you uh, i just showed to you the provisions of the uh, commercial courts act so what happens is when uh, when an agreement is reached uh, under the existing uh, legal system under the commercial courts act if, if an agreement is reached it is deemed to be an award on agreed terms so therefore it is executable like a court decree for example how would you execute an arbitral award or a court decree in that way you can approach the executing court and tell the court that i have this in my favor and the other party has defaulted so therefore please execute this so the execution can happen either by attachment of the property or you know any other manner of uh, any other manner that is going to law okay thank you so much sir next question sir to you if a dispute is between an individual and mnc do mnc come forward for me online mediation to solve the disputes ultimately mediation as ashit uh, also pointed out it all depends on consent of both parties so it doesn't matter who's that uh, who's involved in it as long as both sides consent whether it is an mnc or whether it's an individual or whether it is an msme or bank or anything if as long as they agree because mediation being a consensual process unless both sides agree there cannot be a mediation so if they agree yes there can be a mediation but if you ask me whether they do agree or not it all depends on uh, you know who's advising them i guess okay thank you sir uh, and now i can now i want to move forward to ms akshita ashok madam for uh, some of the questions which my participants want to ask now question to akshita madam uh, first question can a subjudiced matter for infringement of trademark be mediated um at summer that's not something that we are doing right now but uh jawad sir there are people who are uh, mediating this right is actually pretty like yeah that's right uh, akshita yeah. because see this is if the matter is subjudis uh, there is a possibility that the court may refer them to mediation yeah. the court itself may refer if they if both parties agree to it or if the court itself sees what are called as elements of settlement in the dispute so the court may refer them to mediation and that would go under the court annex mediation uh, program but parties also have the option of having a mediation outside the court if both sides agree that you know uh, we would like to take the help of an expert mediator because sometimes in the courts you may not have a mediator who might be specializing in that particular domain so if they wish to they can do that and they can always you know if they reach a settlement they can inform the court either withdraw the proceedings or perhaps file the memorandum of compromise before the court and ask the court to record that so it's entirely possible yeah also i think ip disputes are such a it's such a booming space for mediation like we know that there are actually centers and there are companies abroad that who are trying let's say um online mediation or provide mediation services specifically who are working in just the ip space it's that big of a booming space right now um to i mean it's it's very conducive for mediation if needed so okay ma'am uh, next question is uh, what are the barriers in online mediation goodness <laughs> <laughs> what are the barriers okay so you know how if you speak to someone and they'll say india's technology gap you know there is such an issue the only thing is i get it but sometimes i feel like it's almost used as an excuse you know let's not try it because internet is not there everywhere have you 
if i had not given you a computer not that i gave anyone a computer but i'm just saying hypothetically if i had not given you access to using a computer before right up until the age of 30 and then you learned how to do it after you were 30 is it your fault that you did not know how to use a computer and you're 30 years old and at you know like at 18 there are people using it so if you can take that effort to sort of bring in the infrastructure that they need if that's something you can do if you can give them and teach them if they are able to log into a facebook it's not very difficult to log in anywhere else it's a username and password can you take two minutes extra just to explain to them saying hey click here click here and then you're good to go um it actually solves a lot but true it the fact that all of us together do not have access to the internet at the same speed at the same level of course that is definitely a barrier it would have been so much better especially if the entire governmental sec section also had equal access to all this infrastructure you know does every police station actually have computers no they don't because so far in the offline space it was not a necessity but if you're going to bring something new and you want to try and then you put a computer in everyone now uses it right so of course every time i say technology is an issue i feel like i have to immediately provide this like caveat because it like it's something that a lot of people have just not had access to you know so give them the access and then you're telling me oh no one section of people don't know or don't want to use it okay that's different but um, it's like my grandmother who now knows how to use an atm right and she was so against the atm she was like how can you go into that small space and like like i was so proud but yeah it was it was quite a journey like from her who loved keeping her money inside the cupboard wrapped in her almara somewhere <laughs> to now being able to use her card that was a journey because someone took the effort and she has the infrastructure now to be able to walk to an atm and do it so technology is one i think another big um, obstacle i say or i would say something to solve for is that there are so many languages in india um we can't say one thing in english and think everyone in india has understood it right and especially that's actually one of the most beautiful things about our nation is that it's so diverse and so rich in culture but if you're trying to do something like online mediation then you immediately have to also keep um in mind that it is almost disrespectful for me to go into gujarat into all districts and then expect people to speak english because guys this is something that we all need to be very clear about is that if someone does not know english it just means they know another language better right and if you are trying to give them access to justice you need to be able to communicate to them in the language that they know So a lot of times it can't be like oh they don't speak English so let's not no it the answer is so what do you speak hey let me find someone who speaks that language and lets you know so but language is a problem because we can't send out one notice to the whole uh, to everyone and think everyone's got it it will require us to give it in Gujarati and Marathi and Tamil and Malayalam and Telugu so that is it's an obstacle but we would say something that we need to solve for um, anything else that is. i think sometimes you can get carried away and try to say you know i'll build very very cool technology like you know blockchain is booming and this but learning to make simple things that people can use is a big learning some also we also started by saying you know these are such cool things happening in the us and in the uk but we were like hey if you can just provide three buttons that actually works better So remembering that it's not the onus of the people to be able to use the technology it is to be able to build technology that people can use. So I think just sometimes it's easy to get carried away right because then one side of the world is also moving super fast but yeah I would say these are probably the top 3 uh, things that we collectively need to solve for. Yeah. Can I just add something to that what Akshita said? Yeah, I was reading. Uh, I think it was David Prinsky who has written about uh, two categories of people: some people born before the 1980s <laughs> and people born after the 1980s. So now I was born in 1962. So I belong to the category of people who were born in the 19th before 1980. Now these people, the, the pre-1980 people like me, he calls us as digital immigrants. Okay, like supposing we are, let's say that I'm migrating to the uh, to the United States of America. Now my English will be markedly different from the English spoken by a Native American, right? So you can easily distinguish me as an immigrant if I go there. But those who are born and brought up, people after the 80s who are born and brought up with technology, 
okay they are the digital natives so they they adapt themselves very easily to digital technology like my grandsons they are 11 and 12 okay and they have these online games with the students they have online classes and you know for me to set up my uh, system here my grandson helped me to do because he is much more proficient at that so we are not talking about people on the way out people like us we are talking about people like akshita and all these children who are here who are the future okay they are the digital natives so we don't have to teach them that language they are born with that they are born with those skills they are born with those abilities so when we started in the pandemic when we started uh, online mediations in our high court i kavita will watch for that that how many people resisted that they said no see problem is confidentiality will go so what do we do so i mean the hundreds of excuses okay i'm just giving you one excuse just to avoid and many people refuse to do online mediations but gradually what happened is as the you know the the idea caught on and they found that people like me and kavita are doing it in spite of uh, i don't know kavita must be after 1980 but uh, i am before 1980 so uh, the nine, before 1980 people also started doing online mediations so we are talking about now we are talking about artificial intelligence right we have uh, you know uh, organ- companies like ebay we have the european union they have their own we have amazon and they use ai to resolve their disputes and i don't know whether the numbers are correct akshita correct me if i am wrong but i believe out of for example 6 uh, 6 6 lakh cases uh, of amazons or alibaba or ebay hardly i think uh, 10 or 15000 come up for an interface between the 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 supplier or the manufacturer and the customer so we are talking about ai uh, aided resolution processes today okay i think sama is well poised to even introduce that now so i hope you are going to be introducing that akshita very soon or i don't know whether you already have it but that that is a huge potential that is there but whether that is going to replace uh, human mediators i don't know in one of the webinars i was asked this question i said as long as i am not able to take alexa on a date <laughs> and as long as i prefer a live person to go on a date i don't think that you know really uh, artificial intelligence will replace human beings completely okay yeah true sir so coming future will be without barriers sir. <laughs> and uh, so next question uh, once participant uh, want to do internship in sama uh to akshita uh, this question is and uh, how is it possible to do internship over there got it got it so um there are three things okay one is okay i'm just going to um drop sorry yeah so there are three things one of course if you want an internship i will just drop an email id all you need to do is reach out to us and we'll let you know about slots and availability we are more than happy to have any of you intern with us um we're also incredibly flexible it's we completely work on if you come forward and you want to work on something step into the project if you don't come forward we respect that we probably think you have something else that you're doing so if you're someone who's like super driven you really want to get down and dirty and like do the whole you know like get into a lok adalat or like work on trying to solve cases for different people who have been able to pay their um loans on time i will tell you in advance especially when we're working on these public facing projects the chances of you getting yelled at are like 3 in 10 okay so because we're like doctors right almost like the legal fraternity no one comes to us on the happy no one has called me and said hey akshita i just wanted to check in and tell you that i'm completely fine so like oh i have a dispute i'm so upset i'm so annoyed no one goes none of us go to a doctor to say just want to tell you i'm completely okay right we only go when something's wrong so keep that in mind in the legal space you are dealing with people who are upset but um, but doors are always open we'll just have to see when we can slot you in and on what project that's going on the second thing is you can be a case manager right now like all you have to do is sign up that does not mean you will immediately be given 10000 cases it just means you'll be part of the community you'll have access to all the opportunities that are uh, coming up so i will drop that link as well um on the chat all you have to do is fill that form you'll get verified and then you will be inside the sama community forum so then every time a local adalat comes up we would put out a call for applications we'd say 
and first preference goes to people who are within the sama community so um that's something so you don't even have to wait you can intern with us for four weeks but you can also you don't have to wait till your slot comes um you can uh, just start case managing that gives you a lot of real life experience on dispute resolution and be mindful sama is not like a law firm we're not a big mnc we are a startup so when you come in you will be doing like admin work to operations work to like case managing like we'll just give you like an idea of what it's like to be inside um sama right so just keeping that in mind if a lot of you have been doing corporate internships please don't come in thinking that's how it's going to be um it's going to be just a lot of stuff that everyone's going to be doing together so but i will drop the link to the case manager uh, form right now on chat and i'll also drop the email id that you can uh, write to you can also write to me i've dropped my number and email as well thank you one more question what is the difference between mediation and conciliation i feel like when mr jawad is sitting in the room <laughs> so i think you should only take this how <laughs> i can see you sitting right here i learned from adia rudi lad <laughs> go ahead uh, sir you should take uh, that see uh, let me tell you the similarities between mediation and conciliation okay both are voluntary processes in the sense that they are consensual processes only if both parties agree mediation or conciliation can take place uh, both are confidential processes okay and in both the parties decide what is going to be the outcome of this okay how they want to settle this now what happens is an artificial uh, difference has been created by statute because in conciliation if you see the arbitration and conciliation act it says that conciliator can prepare the terms of settlement and give to the parties which means that conciliator can be a little more proactive in suggesting to parties that look why don't you settle it in this way so parties have the option of either accepting that or modifying that or rejecting that now in mediation it doesn't happen mediation is a purely facilitative process where uh, the mediator merely facilitates the negotiation and does not offer any solutions or any suggestions to the parties now this uh, artificial difference is going to be obliterated completely once perhaps we have the new mediation act which uh, seeks to bring both mediation and conciliation under one definition and even the singapore convention does not talk about conciliation as a different process it says mediation by whatever name it may be called so borrowing from shakespeare so singapore convention does that okay so there's in my opinion there's no difference whatsoever yeah i just i just wanted to add that i think that's what we feel as well like mediation and conciliation are in a sense beautiful collaborative processes it's just they follow the same thing here yeah right now in india you get a conciliation award by the end of it and that's why we also have a lot of our enterprise clients would prefer calling it a conciliation because they can then get a conciliation award that they can enforce if needed but otherwise in a sense um yeah i completely agree with um what was just said thank you thank you to uh, both of you uh, for patiently answering all the questions of the participants now uh, over to rajkumar sir um it was indeed an insightful and enlightening session uh, with this i request dr swetha jain assistant professor faculty of law to convey vote of thanks good afternoon one and all good afternoon everyone thanks for the enriching session and uh, i would now like to give my sincere uh, to all present here um it was a great morning full of excitement learning and motivation for the youth it is my pleasure and privilege to express my vote of thanks for the wonderful session about mediation on behalf of faculty of law the maharaja sayaji rao university of baroda starting with my heartfelt thanks to respected speaker and senior mediator mr a j javed sir and senior mediator ms akshita m ashok and co-founder of sama who readily agreed to spare their very valuable time to deliver today's session that enriched and inspired all of us with your profound knowledge and experience in mediation 
I would now like to express my sincere thanks to Sir Shri Vijay Kumar Srivastav Ji, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda, for his munificence and support for this program. I also want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Professor Dr. Uma Iyer, Ma'am, Dean, Faculty of Law, MSU, who delivered inspiring and very thoughtful welcome speech. It's with her support and guidance that we are able to accomplish the event successfully. I would also like to thank all the members of Faculty of Law, Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda, for extending their support, and obviously not to forget the participant who had made this event successful by the live and active interaction. I want to express my thanks to the technical department of Faculty of Law and the entire team for continuously extending the necessary help to make this program successful. I'm also thankful to everyone who directly or indirectly worked and helped in various ways to make this event successful. Thank you everyone for joining and making this possible. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I hope that we will have many more interactive and knowledgeable sessions in future too. Thanks all and have a great day.